hello squiddies how are you doing welcome back to our youtube channel my name is doreen and you know it's another article um today we'll be reading one from gp news titled prince harry facing worst nightmare as pressure piling on duke of sussex and megan markle so yeah buckle up and come along for the ride um yeah let's dive into it um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have remained silent since Endgame was released worldwide on November 28th. Tell us something we don't know. Tell us something we don't know. <laughs> Prince Harry is facing his worst nightmare as pressure is piling on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, according to a royal commentator. Meghan Markle and Harry have remained silent since King Charles and Kate, Princess of Wales, were named in the Dutch version of Omid Scobie's Endgame as the royals who allegedly had concerns about how dark Prince Archie's skin color would be when he was born. And I'm like, what more did you want them to say? They, they already told us that there are some lo royals who are, you know, talking about Prince Archie's skin color. So I don't know what, what else people want Harry and Meghan to say. Royal commentator um, Duncan Lacombe has claimed the book has ruined any chances Prince Harry and Meghan Markle had in reconciling with the royal family. Prince Harry looked to have offered his father an olive branch last month when he rang him on his 75th birthday. Um, a video of Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet singing happy birthday was also sent to the monarch by his son. Meghan Markle spoke to um, King Charles on the phone during his birthday in a move that could have been the start of building bridges, bridges between the royals and the successes. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's no hope. All I know is that people expect Harry and Meghan to do everything. They expect them to keep extending olive branches and olive branches and olive branches. They expect Harry and Meghan to always take responsibility when it comes to the relationship they have with the royal family. You know, it takes two to build something. So when you expect one side of the, you know, one party to be the one that is always contributing to the relationship, making sure the relationship is at peace, Come on, guys, we all know that doesn't work. We have all been in relationships, in friendships, you know, even with our families. And we know that it takes to to build something, to build a ship in this case. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, I all, I don't like the way that, you know, according to the media, the responsibility, I don't like the way the responsibility is always on Harry's and Meghan's shoulder, such that when something happens, it's always Harry and Meghan that have the burden to reach out to the royal family. And considering, okay, I probably this, this, you know, this thing about Archie's, you know, skin color, um, is water under the bridge for both parties. We don't know because none of the sides has spoken, you know. But um, if if it's not, um, Harry and Meghan are the ones who have been victimized on this side. They're not the ones that are supposed to chase the other side, telling them, oh, you know what, please talk to us. No, the other side is the one that should be begging them because they are the ones on the wrong, you know? So, yeah. Um, but the scathing claims in Scobie's Endgame have put them, Harry and Meghan, right back to square one in peace talks with royal family, according to Lacombe. And I'm like, why are you guys acting like Harry and Meghan are desperate? You know, because that's the tone I'm getting from this article. It's like they're always there begging, please talk to us, please talk to us, please stay in touch with us. And I believe that's not the case. You know, <laughs> It's like if they, they, you know, the other side does not, you know, stay in contact with Harry and Meghan, it's like they won't survive, you know. And so far, so good. So far, they are doing very well for themselves. Um, there, there's now pressure being put on Harry to come out and distance himself from the book 
and I think that will be very tempting for him to do because it seems he has been trying to soften his tone towards the royals. Um, okay, soften his tone. That's that's not the word that I would use. Um, you know, me um him extending olive branches does not mean that um he stopped holding the other side accountable for their actions you know yes um i do believe harry and megan have moved on you know they have moved on from all the wrongs that you know were committed um against them by the royal family i actually and firmly believe that but that does not mean that every time you know the royal family does something that is not right that harry and Meghan will now stop holding them accountable i believe they will yeah so i don't think he has grown soft he has just forgiven them you know and if something else comes up if they do something else that is you know that is not right i believe um harry will be very outspoken about it you know he will try to hold them accountable so i don't think this actually hurts harry i don't see how it does that you know yeah um continuing there were some green shoots that he might be trying to end the field from his side yes that that is true that that is very true that he was trying you know to you know to remove the bad blood between the two of them you know um so the timing of the book couldn't be worse for harry i think it's his worst nightmare um worst nightmare is you know it's far-fetched because I keep thinking, obviously, Harry and Meghan knew who these two guys were from the beginning, right? And if we know who Harry and Meghan are, and we already know that Meghan actually wrote a letter to King Charles, it means that they ha might have actually tried to, you know, to speak to, to you know, um, King Charles and Princess Kate, you know, um, privately talk to them about how you know the unconscious bias you know was affecting um talk to them about the unconscious bias you know comments they were making towards archie i do believe because these people are literally audacious and courageous i believe they they might have done that and yeah, so I don't see how this is a worst nightmare for Harry. It's not. If um if it's a nightmare for anyone, I believe it's a nightmare for King Charles and Princess Kate. Because now the whole whole world knows that they were the ones who made those comments. You know, now the veil has been removed, you know. We we have started looking them in another light, you know. So yeah, if it's a nightmare for anyone, it's not for Harry or Meghan. It has to be for King Charles and Princess Kate because now the whole world knows, you know? Yes. And we know how, you know, royals hold, you know, the opinion polls um, very highly. So I believe that that's a nightmare for them, okay? Um, Scobie, a royal author with links to sources close to Meghan and Harry, has denied leaking the names and said no version of Endgame contained the names of the accused royals. Um, Charles and Kate's name appeared in the Dutch version of Endgame after a draft version of the book was published in Netherlands rather than the final version which did not include the names according to the Times. Meghan Markle claimed during her 2021 interview with Oprah Winfrey that members of the royal family had concerns about how dark her son's skin color would be when he was born. The Duchess of Sussex said during the interview when outlining her decision not to name the number of the royal family, I think that will be very damaging to them, not to Harry and Meghan. So you see, Meghan had already seen this, that if she exposed who it would be, that would be very um, damaging for them. 
you know and this goes further to you know to prove to us that it's not harry nor megan who exposed the names of these people it has to be someone from you know the other side of the royals you know yeah because megan was conscious about how these would damage the popularity of those two people and now we can see right we can see sources close to megan have insisted um no one on her team briefed scoby on the names of the royals who allegedly made the remarks and i fully believe that it was neither harry nor megan who made you know who you know who leaked that information or anyone from you know um or anyone from her side um and people saying that these the news coming out will damage you know harry and megan you know I don't see how it does that. It damages the popularity of the, you know, of the other two guys. Yeah, so I don't see how it's a nightmare. And if it's a nightmare to either Harry or Megan, it will be out of the fact that these two people, in spite of not being perfect, they are still their family. They are still their relatives. So yeah, up to some point, I believe they would have, you know, feel some kind of empathy towards these people. Anyway, that's it from me. Until the next time, bye-bye.